नमस्कार व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू येट अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ इन्फिनिट पॉसिबिलिटीज विद प्रदीप गुप्ता ब्रॉड टू यू ओनली बाय मना टीवी इंटरनेशनल फ्रेंड्स लेट मी रिमाइंड यू ऑल दैट इन आवर प्रीवियस एपिसोड वी डिस्कस अबाउट सर्कमस्टांसिस हाउ सर्कमस्टांस इज डिफाइंड नॉट बाय एनीथिंग एल्स बट बाय आवर रिस्पॉन्स टू इट एंड हाउ वी कैन चूज टू बी इधर अ विक्टिम और अ सर्वाइवर और अ लीडर नो आई होप you have time to reflect on where you fit on that intensity versus experience matrix that i left you with you know that is a very important thing for all of us to remember so what we will do today is continue our conversation and learn how to apply that information that knowledge that we gathered in the last episode and deal apply it towards dealing with covid you know we all talked about the social distancing and the isolation and the loneliness that we feel and how it's dampening our spirit so how we can use that knowledge so that covid cannot crush us that's what we are going to be talking about today and also remember victor had promised to share a special code with us on dealing with covid situation so we will be talking about that but first i just want to all uh, once again let you all know we just listen with an open mind we're not here to challenge any belief or uh, customs or anything like that we just here to offer you a new outlook a new perspective and then maybe some new beginnings will happen in your life that's what this show is all about infinite possibilities so now let's welcome the man who is going to lead us forward in today's discussion hello victor welcome once again to we're really excited yeah. to have you once again and you know why we are so excited because we want to continue that conversation about how we can prevent covid from crushing us so are you ready to kind of take us forward Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just been looking forward all the time to bring out that part. It was like more like there was something left in me, and I wanted to bring it out and share it. So even I'm pretty I excited. Been, I've been waiting all week time. to hear this. I've been waiting all week. I'm sure our viewers have been too. Yeah. So uh, let me just begin with uh, the the like there are two things which have which is now the language of the world. One you know is unmute. <laughs> you know the word of the uh, covid is one is unmute and the other word is uh, social distancing and that is true one of the things that we are bearing because of covid is social distancing and what i did is i constructed a pyramid and uh, thought that let us look at and how this is will go forward what is the social uh, construct that is going to be impacted because of covid what is being impacted what is going to be impacted and probably what each of us can make possible that's what i'm going to look at uh, presenting before you now look at it social distancing is something people are experiencing across the world across the world this conversation of social distancing is becoming now what has also happened because of the social distancing is social displacement when i say social displacement means the way people travel work from home study from home uh, celebrate from home there's a total displacement of everything that was outside has shifted right into your bedroom your hall or your kitchen it's in including, gen- it's a, including this interview <laughs> yeah i mean now that displacement is happening now what is it this is what we are dealing with but what has also happened subconsciously is social fragmentation really. like how what relationships you keep what relations not what is essential what is not essential there has been a complete social fragmentation now till that is okay i would say this is what it is but what is concerning me the way we remain if we continue to remain as victims to the circumstances what is concerning me is there is going to be social distortion there it is going to distort the way society was interacting and something is going to get disrupted about how it was to how it is and how it's going to be and while there may be some positives to it like how we are doing this interview on zoom and 
there are uh, online classes, the expansion and all that is creating certain possibilities. But we also need to be mindful of the fact that certain things which we took as for granted in social existence is going to be distorted forever. Is going to be distorted forever. And can you give an example of that? Like for example, uh, when you're looking at how it is going to distort is, now, how are the families going to exist? Now imagine this work from home is going to be the future. Uh, now, look at it, a person who is finding a job now, who is getting a job during this time. He never going to go to the office and may never ever go to the office. Consider that a lot of our learning happened because we interacted with people at office. I see. Travel to office. This, this was such an integral part of your development. The travel to work and back and the interaction at work, you know, the, the canteen that you had at work, the eating together at work, the, the coffee breaks with people were probably the highlights of our professional development. That's true. That may never happen again. And, pe and people may not even think that those were valuable because such small, small things which is to happen naturally and were not something that you took an effort. Now, even with an effort may not happen or probably going and visiting different homes. Now it has become a challenge. Uh, one of the most uh, empathetic moments were when people died, you go and visited their families, you attended the funerals, you attended a memorial, you spent some time, you bonded and that grief was shared with people. I'm not sure if that's going to happen. People are going to be worried. If somebody was sick, you went and visited them, spent time with them, spoke to them. Is that going to happen? Or are people going to be scared about infections? Yeah, that is true. In fact, uh, even sometimes when we meet as friends and all, uh, nobody shakes hands anymore. We just wave at each other or just kind of just do a fist bump. That's something that we do, but it's changing. You're absolutely right. That is at least, I'm just saying, what moment of sorrow being shared is going to be clouded with the fear of what can happen. So exactly. fundamental to being a human and it is happening and maybe in a few years, maybe in a few months that behavior may be getting erased from human interaction globally. Because we are saving ourselves from each other. Like human beings are saving themselves from human beings. Uh, human beings have become a threat to human beings. I mean that never was there. That was there at war. When war happened, uh, one was a threat to the other. But now walking on the street, there is a threat to the other. At the, at, uh, the store uh, where uh, you have these huge stores where you do your groceries and you do uh, like your Costco's or something in those stores. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I saw this whole scene where, you know, people carry these carts and all and sometimes they trip and things fall. And it was so natural for someone to help out the other person and go and pick it out and put it in the cart and say it happens. Or you're just carrying some bags and they slip off and you mm -hmm. just someone else supports and puts it. And I saw this where the Involuntary function was to go and do something and both people stopped because they are worried about social distancing. I mean, Correct. and it seemed more sensible to let that person pick up their own things and put it rather than two people interact. That's a great observation actually. It, it, is, it is sad. That's the distortion I'm talking about. You're beginning to justify inhuman behavior as sensible and logical, you know, and uh, I'm beginning to see that the top of the pyramid is going to be social dementia. Many of them in another, because some things are habits which, residual habits stay because of highly impacting circumstances. 
This is pretty depressing, Victor. Actually, what 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 is your take? How can we get out of this uh, negative state of mind? To get out of the negative state of mind, we should acknowledge that this is it, and this is the possible future. If you are not going to be alert about the possible future, uh, then we are going to say one day things will change. They will change so badly that you may and I may not even know how to bring it back. So, if you look at this, uh, definitely, Pradeep, I my I would not leave anybody depressed. Uh, that would be so inhuman. I am only talking about how inhuman it is, and then leave people depressed. <laughs> that would be so inhuman on my part. So, <laughs> so I am going to share what we can begin to awaken to. What can we, as human beings who are understanding that this is the probable future, can begin to awaken ourselves to? And let me present the possibility. Uh, this is what I want to present as the possibility. Then we begin to redefine what are social spaces. Like, what is a social space? I see while social distancing is uh, separating, but if we can recreate social spaces, like understanding that today because of technology, Boundaries have gone. So we can have larger social spaces and social spaces need not get defined to geographical limits. You know, the social space is available which is much larger. And it is not limited to physical form. It is not limited to distance, time and form. And it is expandable. And each human being can expand that social space. That power has arrived. And that is what I would like to look at. And how can we redefine social engagement? You know, when I am saying social engagement, I think certain behaviors, which is now like I am just telling you, uh, how many of us remember sending out cards? How many of us remember sending out letters? Right. I mean, today it's so easy to reach a letter. We are used to typing messages. We, because of instant communication, uh, instant short communication engage long community I mean probably writing letters you know during this period I wrote a lot of letters to different people I and see. the joy that people received with those letters it was like an awakening of something that was lost I am not saying that's the example that's what you should do but I am saying how about redefining what is social engagement You may not for a long time get to be in each other's homes, large parties, all that may not happen. But how about bringing that engagement beyond the geography because of this infinite space that you have? How about redefining engagement? You know? Mm -hmm. And then there is social acceptance. Is accepting a lot of differences. See, we will finally need human beings. We cannot live in isolation. We coming out of our silos and out of our kiosks and accepting a large amount of differences, integrating the differences around us. You know, if you were to look at it, we have been living in commonalities. We try to bring commonalities as groups. How about having acceptance to differences and then expanding that? Groups with differences rather than groups with commonalities. That is a greater acceptance. Now people feel more accepted. People don't have to search for uh, common groups where they can discuss anything or share because it's the but the expansion of accepting rather than separating. Uh, you're with me. In the commonalities, we sometimes separate. But how about accepting? When that happens, what will happen is we will recreate social conversations. Because we are not antisocial people. Human beings are designed as social animals. Exactly. And social isolation, social distancing, social separation is something that is anti human. Correct. And therefore, a reinvention of what is social conduct 
a reinvention, a recreation to social behavior, engaging with people. Today, it is possible for people from different countries to take up the course sitting in their country in a different country. Exactly. Which means I no more need to go. It is not binding on me that to study in Columbia University, I will have to go all the way to Columbia University until then. But today, it is possible because of the online model, because of the technology, that I could be sitting in one country, engaging with a course in another country, with students from different countries, without moving space from my country. It is possible. It is it's, it's, it's possible. A structure okay. there needs to come. Uh, because uh, it's going to take a long time for uh, people to really move geographical places. Geographical places is going to be not for essentials, but for beyond the essential. A lot of essential is being transformed. That is something if we can get. Then there will be not social distortion, but there will be social recreation and invention. And then we can look at a social awakening an awakening amongst people uh, to what the world is. Today, it is not very difficult to interact across the globe and really get the global village where a oneness between human beings is now possible. And if we can look at bringing that oneness, then we would have reinvented social existence and not go to social dementia and think that human beings now to save themselves are supposed to live in isolation, separation or distance. But a possibility of oneness, you know, that is something which I think is possible. And if one by one, one by one, each of us tries, it is it's going to be possible to a large extent. Uh, communities can be global for everything. Of course, I also believe that today if you are not global, uh, you might also be extinct. Then you will forget what is local also. The, the new local is global. And if that awakening can come, imagine the oneness that we can bring by embracing differences. How much can I awaken myself then? What will become possible? for that awakened human beings across the planet Pradeep. No, Just think is, about it, no, Pradeep. Yeah, this is, this is amazing how you took something so negative that, you know, social distancing leading up to social dementia and it, it could be actually very depressing, very stressful for people and then you convert it to something which is all full of possibilities. If only we look at it with a different perspective. This is beautiful. I want to leave this slide here for our viewers for some time so that they can actually absorb this because this is, you know, a big secret being revealed almost, you know, how in the last episode you talked about a choice that we make and that choice along with the right attitude and approach, you know, how it can take you towards awakening instead of dementia. This is so profound, Victor. Yeah, but be better. I think the time has come for a global social awakening. Yes, Victor. So I'm sure our viewers are really excited about uh, finding out what the code is that you promised them. I was kind of looking at it and the code that I kind of put in is 4321. Uh, now you might be wondering what is this? 4321 is just saying from 4 to 1 in the reverse direction. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. On this term. 4A, 3E, 2B and 1G. So, okay. I'm just putting that, it in that this does, fashion. That does look like a code word here. So, I have to just show it on the screen for our viewers so that they can kind of go along with you as you are dismantling this code for them. 4A, accept, awaken, ask, act. Now, it is important when such circumstances hit you, accept your failures. Accept the failures. Because if you are not going to accept your failures, then you are going to blame something. Blame nobody. Take responsibility for where you are at this moment. Wherever you are, accept. 
If there are failures, accept. Whatever the circumstances, whatever be the circumstances externally, you are defining your reality. Like the circumstances can be. Accept. Accept, this is it. Most of us live in denial. And that is why I am saying awaken. Don't be in denial. That things will get better one day. Don't be in that denial. No, it's not as bad as it is. If it is bad, it is bad. If it is worse, it is worse. Except. Mm -hmm. Don't try to be positive about what's messed up. And deny what is. Wake up. Wake up to the new reality. The new reality has happened. Don't live in the past and hope that it will come. The new normal has happened. It is not that things will come back to normal. There is no normal to come back. This is the new normal. For there is some, there is a benefit of the new normal. Who wants to lose that benefit? Along with that, there is an integration. It's awaken. It has arrived. Now the thing is, if you and I don't awaken and take responsibility, we are the ones who are going to be sidelined. We are just going to be losing out. We are just going to get out of the game. And the important thing is, Ask for help. All of us need help, some kind of an help. Ask for help. It doesn't make you small. In fact, if you have been negatively impacted, there is nothing wrong happened to you. Happens. Just ask for help. Share. The thing is, when we ask for help to somebody, somebody is free to ask help from us. But if we refrain from asking help and think, if anybody wants help, I am there to help. Uh, that, that doesn't happen that way. That, that makes the other person who is receiving help small. But if you help me and I help you and we help each other, it just makes us feel so one and equal. It doesn't make the receiver small and the giver big. It just makes both needing each other. Ask, ask and then act. Don't wait. For things to change, just act. You make mistakes, you, your action turns out bad, no problem. At least you learn this action is bad. Act. Don't wait for something to happen. To accept, awaken, ask and act. Wow. Don't stay stuck. It is not so, important if your actions are right or wrong. Just act. Yeah, this, this, is, this is so interesting, Victor, because I mean, I'm thinking about myself and you know, I consider myself a very positive person and a lot of times, like you said, you know, I'm in denial because I'm not ready to accept that something bad happened or I failed in something. And the other problem that I see with myself all the time is about asking. I, I feel like it's going to hurt my sense of pride if I ask for help. So I think you, you said a very positive thing here that, you know, we all ask each other, we all help each other. It's not just anybody becomes smaller or bigger by asking. That's something that even I need to kind of adopt that in my life. I always have yeah. trouble asking for help. Yeah, most of us have. But when you ask help, you make the other person feel so empowered that they can contribute something. And it allows them also the vulnerability to ask you for help. Exactly. That is really Otherwise, beautiful. both are going to keep being inauthentic with each other, but how much they need each other. The next thing is, be honest with your experiences. You're feeling like a loser, feel it. You're feeling great, feel it. But don't be manipulative about your own experiences to yourself. And express. Express. In you expressing pe with people, you empower. Express yourself. Don't try to be right, wrong, articulate. But express. The genuinity is now the need of the hour with human beings. In a state of chaos, confusion, self-doubt, being honest with your experiences, expressing yourself, he is the empowerment. And so, be... Uh, I have a doubt here, sorry, about expression here. Yeah. Suppose, as a head of the family, suppose uh, I lose my job and I am really hurt, I am vulnerable, I am insecure. But I don't want to express that because that will, you know, my children are there. How would they feel? I don't want them to see me as a weak person. How, how would one deal with this kind of an expression? And I think now this beautiful question 
Pradeep, I think this is the myth or the fallacy in which parents live. The children know that my father is feeling weak, he is insecure. But I don't want him to know because if I let him know that I know he is insecure and weak, he will feel defeated. So I will also act brave. The fact is the father is feeling insecure. The children know father is feeling insecure. But both of them are putting up an act so that the other should not be hurt. Just imagine the myriad of chaos. I see. I mean, children are smart. They just know what their parents are going through. But they find it so difficult to tell them lest they say it and the act that their parents are putting on will be destroyed. So anyway, it is there in the underlying substratum. Just covering it up with something else doesn't change the underlying substratum. Got it. Share and tell them I'm feeling insecure. Like the the other day when I was talking, there's something happened, I was telling my son, that I'm actually feeling angry and hurt and I feel so helpless in this situation. So he comes, sits next to me and says, even I'm feeling the same way. I said, why did you tell me? No, I thought you'd think that I'm... I don't want you to feel bad. So I thought we'll talk something positive. And then we just hugged each other and he said, I don't know what to do. So what we did was, uh, for the next one hour, we just shared the bed. Both of us were lying on the bed and just doing nothing. And <laughs> it just felt good. And then we got up and it was fine. But that expression of that genuine was the empowerment. No advice to him, no advice to me. Uh, we were, and but both felt empowered because he did not have to feel bad about being so helpless. I didn't have to feel bad about being helpless because that's how it was. And that acknowledgement that both of us are in the same boat and it is clear to all of us and we don't have to put up an act of being strong was so empowering that the helplessness itself disappeared. I, I see. I see what you're saying. Thanks for clarifying because that for our viewers. Because taken away. Yep. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Thank you. And then the next thing is believe in yourself. Self-doubt is actually a sin that you can have about being human. I mean, when you and I were born, we could not be delivering ourselves. We were born. Nature took care of us. Believe that you will come out of this. Believe in yourself. The only people, that the difference between people who make it and don't make it is the belief in themselves and the strength of their relationships. Going into an isolated cocoon because you are sad will only take you to depression. And from there, I don't know what else it could take you to. Now mental health is becoming so common. And when I address mental health cases with people, what I generally see is a vacuum about the quality of relationships. And when I get them to bond with people, they suddenly start dismantling their mental health. Otherwise, we are going to magnify mental health. Just imagine you have served out and you don't bond. It is a recipe for mental health disaster. And I'm now going to leave you with the last quote. And you're just going to love this, Pradeep. I'm going to tell you something. Is one G. Be grateful. The only reason you're suffering is because you're not on the other side of COVID. You're not the one who's dead. You're the one who's alive. You can suffer because you're alive. If you were dead, others would be suffering that you died. Wow. <laughs> That's actually a very shocking statement, Victor. But that is so true also at the same time. The fact experiencing everything, be grateful. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you would be buried. The COVID would have hit you and for some good wow. reason, like for those exactly. people who got COVID, they didn't go and infect themselves. They were walking on the road and next morning they got, they realized they had COVID and they went to the hospital and tested positive. But you and I also walked to the same road and we didn't test positive. Wow. Why that guy it's tested it's positive? It was not fault of his. But you can just be grateful that you have survived. Wow. And even if you had COVID, you are surviving. You are alive. How would being grateful to the fact that you are alive? You can suffer only nothing, if you are alive. Nothing more important than that. Correct. Wow. 
Victor, I love this code of yours. Four A three E two B one G. This is yeah. this is really really mind blowing. Actually, I and and one thing I'm noticing is first I am actually astonished at how you moved from social distancing, which was such a negative thing, onto social spacing and turned it into a positive social awakening pyramid. And next, this code of yours, the four A three E two B one G. It's a little bit of a tongue twister, but uh, I just want to leave our viewers uh, with this code here because in my I think this is not just to deal with COVID. I think we can deal with any situation, any circumstance that life throws at us. Right? This is absolutely mind blowing, Victor. Uh, I am sure our viewers are also as uh, you know right now awestruck, just like I am. This is so simple yet so profound. I want to thank you. For your wisdom and sharing this code with us, you're gonna remember this code. If not, please make a note of this. This is something that if you can adopt in your life, it can make dramatic differences. Victor, thank you so much for sharing it with us. And yeah. I think uh, I want to leave our viewers with this today. This is the crux of uh, your code, Victor, as I see it, right? Yeah. Let's let's leave our viewers with this last view. And uh, I just want to remind our viewers. to share their feedback their comment their experience with us write to us tell us what you want uh, us to address in our upcoming episode we'll be back here next week with another beautiful episode and the topic this time is the design of creating a future that's what we're going to be discussing with uh, victor in our next upcoming episode so please stay tuned uh, victor thank you once again for your insight we are really blessed that you could come here and share with us your wisdom our viewers are very fortunate and i want to thank you and our viewers for the tuning in uh have a yeah. wonderful time everybody and we'll be back here till then stay safe namaste yeah pretty but i didn't want to tell you best it is too big a word i'm just grateful to be here uh, it, the word blessed is too overwhelming for me uh, this is something yeah, that yeah. i practiced over the last one year and i thought this has worked for me i should not keep it with me but i should share it with people and say this has worked for me this code has cracked it for me uh, during the covid year so i thought i need to share this with people no we you may or may not agree with but we feel we are blessed that you could share it with us we are very fortunate and we want to thank you once again thanks thank you victor we we'll, we look forward to having you again with us next week thank